Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are. Um, so what this video is going to entail, it's going to give you guys a broad uh, understanding of the planet alignments and what this major uh, Jupiter and Saturn conjunction in Aquarius is going to bring to your sign, as well as uh, we are going to basically talk about where this is going to affect you depending on your sign as well as uh, predictions that are going to be unfolding for you for 2021. So as you guys know, we've been dealing with we've been dealing with the uh, Saturn and Jupiter conjunction in Capricorn uh, for a couple of for this year uh, and the previous year, a lot of transformative type of energy depending on where you had your Capricorn. Uh, in that placement of house, that's where it was greatly uh, influencing you this year. Now we are going into uh, the conjunction happening in Aquarius. So what this means, um, a lot of people don't really have an understanding of this. I think that sometimes, you know, uh, people get confused. Jupiter and Saturn are the biggest planets, aside from the sun, of course. And it takes broadly about uh, 20 to 30 years for it to go all around all the zodiac signs. Uh, so, it, like I said, give or take, it takes about 20 to 30 years for them to uh, meet in certain signs. Never as close as we are going to be experiencing this December the 21st. Um, but the, the major part here, or I, I guess the major transformative energy that's coming in, not only that we just experienced a solar eclipse in Sagittarius, uh, which is going to affect you the next coming six months, depending on where you have your Sagittarius placement, um, but also this major transformative energy. So if we look back into history, you guys can see that um, around the time frame that Jupiter conjuncted Saturn, uh, in the element of water was in um, back in the Renaissance era, which is where we had the massive explosion of paintings, painters, poets, uh, everybody traveling by water, of course, the element of water there. Um, and then we forward to the fire element, which was, I believe, in the 1600s. Uh, and that was the, you know, aggression, the wars that we experience, the, uh, you know, colonization and, and overtaking, etc. with aggression. Um, then we forward to uh, the 1800s, sorry, which is what we've been experiencing in Earth energies, right? So everything to do with the Earth, everything to do with, you know, building, that's what Earth element is. It's about building. It's the massive explosion of, um, you know, uh, machinery and building and power and controlling. Uh, so all of that has been playing out. Now we go into the element of air. Um, so again, I think the last time that this happened was, I could be mistaken, but... Um, it was when um, when we had the Jupiter conjunction with Saturn was when when it was in the sign of Aquarius was around the time frame that we started to see um, the first schools open uh, when we started to see uh, you know newspapers and 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 newspaper companies and printing and all of this so. What does that mean for the next coming 200 years? Because remember, Saturn and Jupiter uh, are entering the air element. So we're going into the Aquarian energy, the Aquarian era. Um, but it will remain in the elements of air for another 200 years. So basically, what I'm saying is there is a major transformative energy here that you will probably never experience again. Why? Because you're... Uh, going into a shifting of energy of a different element. Um, and like I said, it takes about broadly 200 years for it to transition into another element. So uh, probably your children or the children of your children won't even uh, 
be able to experience the transformation of Saturn and Jupiter going into another element. I hope that makes sense. So that's the reason why there's major transformation. Of course, you guys know that we have been going through the uh, major transition of the culmination, basically, of uh, the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction that's been happening in the sign of Capricorn, which is all to do with authority. It's all to do with uh, higher power. It's all to do with, um, and again, Saturn is the karma planet. So again, that's why we have all these revelations coming out. That's why, you know, government is shifting and there's a need for uh, the people and humans and humanity to be heard. Uh, and that's what we're going into the future with uh, Jupiter conjunction, uh, conjunctioning uh, Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius, major explosion of new science uh, or uh, revelations of science, um, expansion in anything that has to do with uh, the future and moving forward. Uh, again, uh, time, if you guys are into investing in, etc., now is the time to be investing into those uh, new uh, new forms of uh, finances and money like Bitcoin, etc. Uh, there's thousands of them out there. But that's really going to be booming for the next coming four years, you know. So again, major transformative energy. Now, this... How is this going to affect you, Virgo, in your sign? So going into 2021, from now all the way, or I should say from December the 21st, all the way to 2021, we have Jupiter and Saturn conjunctioning in your sixth house. So this is a normal house for Virgo. Um, so what I mean by normal is that it's a, a very positive uh, house to have that conjunction in. And this is all to do with um, this is all to do with uh, health, your health, uh, the condition of your health, wanting to renovate yourself, wanting to uh, strengthen yourself. Uh, major transitions, not only in your sixth house, but the sixth house rolls over the daily tasks, right? The everyday, the mundane. Uh, so you're going to be feeling this shift of energy of being extremely busy, having a lot of things to do, feeling like you don't have enough time to kind of, you know, zen in um, and check with yourself. So that's going to be very important for you to do for this year of 2021, as there is major expansion for you in your finances as well and career. So again, um, really, it's going to be important for you to learn to balance your life because it's going to feel almost like chaotic sometimes. Um, so in the sixth house from January all the way to May in Aquarius in your sixth house, um, again, like I said, it, there is a uh, relief, especially for those of you guys that have Virgo in your ascendant. Uh, this is going to be assisting in the area um, that is in your house that you can improve focus on productivity and focus on uh, bettering your health. Like I said, Saturn is also known as father time. So again, we go back to that, a feeling like you're a bit restricted, feeling like you just don't have enough time. Uh, so it's all about prioritizing for 2021. You're able to manifest anything you're wanting to manifest, Virgo, but it's going to come at putting effort and putting your focus and determination behind that. Why? Because Jupiter is all about expansion. It's all about growth. It's all about, I'm going to bless you here. I'm going to bless you there. But Saturn, Saturn, you know, being the authoritative father figure, it's like, ah, you got to put in blood, sweat, and tears in order for me to uh, give you some type of blessing or give you some type of a praise or give you some type of gift. You need to really put that effort and show me that you're willing to make things happen for yourself. So it's all about self-growth, Virgo. Um, let's see what else. Um, okay. So we've already talked about that. Also very important. We have, um, a square, uh, Uranus is going to be activating major change with jobs, uh, with routine. Like I said, um, expect a major change around February 16th through June 14th. And this is to do, uh, Jupiter, will be there and it will be very beneficial for you. 
Um, but I see that for some of you guys, it could be like changing some type of career or making some type of move within your field that is going to really put you to the next level, Virgo. I think that um, Virgo is one of, I want to say about four or five signs that are going to be very, very, like major changes in your life uh, for 2021. So again, um, make those changes only if you feel like you kind of surpass that stage in your life um, and you need to take it to the next level because like I said, Jupiter is there to expand you. It's there to bless you. Um, but Saturn, you know, Saturn's there like, okay, are you willing to put the, the effort? It's about taking action. Um, so again, uh, also your sixth and eighth house, um, sixth and eighth house, house is going to be activated here. Aries is in the, it's also going to be in your eighth house and Libra is going to be in your second and Mercury in the beginning of the year, major money manifestation for you guys. I cannot stress this enough. In the beginning, I want to say from the end of December all the way to the beginning of January, third week of January, major potential for money manifestations here, you guys. So really put your intention, like I said, put effort and energy. If you're at work, you just started a job, really work that extra mile, even if it's not expected from you. Why? Because it's going to bring, it's going to shine light on you and your effort. So this could be supervisors uh, taking you to the next level or management. Um, this is like more responsibility that comes to you, but more money comes to you as well. So again, uh, go that extra mile, you know, even if you feel like they're not going to notice, doesn't matter, do it because people will, people of authority, people in higher uh, elevation is definitely going to take notice and they for some of you guys they can even take you as a wingman or they can take you as uh, an apprentice uh, to a bigger higher opportunity so definitely put yourself out there uh, Virgo risings may find relationships uh, Jupiter is going to be in Pisces as well with Mercury retrograde in Gemini uh, on the 20th of May till July the 11th and your seventh house being activated as well so big developments with career and with love. For some of you guys, this is meeting a potential partner that's going to be in your life for the next coming few years. For others of you, this could represent a partnership, like a lifelong partnership, like a relationship that starts something uh, committed, but ultimately turns into marriage. So major transformative energy here for you, Virgos. So beautiful energy do the most you possibly can around this time frame. Like I said, sky's the limit for you guys. Just make sure to put effort, okay? All right, so let's get into your forecast. Let's see what Spirit has for you guys. Spirits, what are the messages for Virgos? What can they expect for the coming 2021? Please give me 12 sets to represent the 12 months of the year. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. 12 sets to represent the 12 months for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. You guys definitely comment below, subscribe, like um, the video so that you guys can help me grow this channel. Not only that, but so you guys can let me know if you guys want me to continuously uh, be doing videos every beginning of the year as a forecast to see what's to come for you guys for uh, 2021 and for the coming years, okay? Oof, okay. So we have January here. Okay, February. March. April. May, ooh, June, yikes, yowzers, <laughs> July, August, September, October, November, and December. Wow. 
You guys have a lot, a lot of... And the tower at the bottom. I don't usually look at the bottom cards unless I feel called towards it, and I definitely did. I feel that this is going to be your 2021... <laughs> 2021 Virgo and not in a negative way you guys the tower is a representation of the universe stepping in pushing you to take that major change that step where you're kind of you feel stuck you're scared you don't know where to go that type of energy and it's like spirit saying you got to you know what I mean like for your higher purpose this is what 2021 is going to look like for you guys almost like a feel and like I said this is not negative energy this is positive this is a feeling of major transformation this is looking I want to say December 2000 uh 2021 December 2021 you're going to be looking at the past and you're going to be like I cannot believe all of this has transpired or has happened within a year time frame this is the energy that I'm feeling for you guys in a very positive way. There's major breakthroughs for you guys. For some of you guys, finding your calling, finding your purpose, finding that partner that you've been searching for, I should say, they finding you. Um, you're going to go from a complete, a complete makeover, Virgo. And like I said, very positive. Okay, so for January, we have the Judgment card and the Knight of Cups. So I see you guys, for some of you guys, this could be dealing with a person from the past. This could also represent uh, still actively dealing with someone that comes and goes. Not really sure where you stand with this person. Now, for January, I feel that there's a decision that's going to be made. And you're walking away from this connection that is not bringing you the stability that you're looking for. Truth is, what I'm hearing is, I have no time for this bullshit. So that could represent the energy that you're going to start to experience for some of you guys being extremely busy, not like just not wanting to deal with drama anymore because you're so focused, like laser focused, going towards your achievements, going towards your goals. And this is residue energy. So again, this is amazing energy, to be honest with you. Now, February's energy here is the five of cups with the three of wands. Again, Cutting the ties to what no longer serves you. For some of you guys, there is major expansion. And truth of the matter is with the Five of Cups, I feel that for some of you guys, you're going to be experiencing almost like cutting of ties with friends or people in your social circle where you feel that they're either criticizing or judging you or almost making you feel like, like, like you make them feel that you're better than them. But truth of the matter is there's major changes happening in your life and they just are not cool with it. They're not cool, they're envious, or they're just not happy for you. And I see you really feeling like in your feelings, like, you know, I really thought this was a friend or I really thought that, you know, they wanted the best for me. And it's like spirit is showing you that it's that they're not, that they that it's time to cut the links to people that are no longer encouraging, helping you focus or really maintaining that energy of pushing through and moving forward. Here's the thing, Virgo. It's easy for everyone to say, I want you to do good, but it's very different when they start to see you do better than them. And I feel that this is the energy that they're, they're, they're symbolizing here. It's almost like you feel sad because you're in your feelings because you feel like, I can't believe that they're acting this way but for others of you it's like i kind of felt that this was coming and you know good riddance um because the five of you know the five of cups is really being emotional but but it's only temporary because you're looking at the bigger picture and the bigger picture is if you're not going to be happy while i'm putting the effort to get myself to where i want to go then you don't deserve to be there with me when I am successful or when I found my footing or when I'm moving forward or when I'm making plans or when I'm, you know, just making big moves. So again, the advice for the month of February is don't remain so much in the energy of, you know, feeling sad. Um, 
and I'm going to be straightforward with you and I'm going to be honest. When we are so laser focused in trying to achieve our goals, trying to achieve what we want to make happen, sometimes, yeah, it's going to get lonely. That's what that, that's how it is. At the top, it's always lonely, you guys. Um, why? Because not everyone's going to be able to vibrate to the energy that you're vibrating. Sometimes we raise our vibration with self-love, with focusing on ourselves and working on ourselves and building on ourselves. And truth of the matter is, some people that you probably grew up with are not going to be, you know, along with you in that ride when you succeed. Why? Because, like I said, sometimes success and sometimes growth is a challenge for other people, especially when you came from the same place. They want to see you do good, just not better than them. So keep that in mind. Now, for the month of March, we have here the Six of Wands and the Two of Wands, you guys. This is definitely like getting in the limelight this is um people taking recognition of your hard work this is major transformation or major breakthroughs in regards to your career and in regards to your finances for some of you guys this is taking apprenticeship uh towards a business or career that you've been studying for for a very long time for others of you this is a feeling of, of achievement like getting to the point of saying I'm actually, you know, I'm making it happen and really taking the power and owning that type of energy. Uh, six of Wands can also represent feeling victorious, overcoming obstacles or being able to look towards the past and feeling very proud of yourself, Virgo. Now for the month of April, we have the Hermit and the Knight of Swords. I see you guys very much in your head for the month of April. I feel that there's going to be a lot of internalizing, a lot of, there is a need of connecting with your spiritual side. Um, I feel that for some of you guys, this could be, again, you're just on a mission, you know, really putting effort and energy towards achieving your goals where you're going to feel some type of, like people don't understand you or you're lonely. Um, and this could even be for those of you guys that are married. You, you're you still like, you have so many things on your plate that you're going to be feeling like you're just not understood. And what Spirit is telling you is that for the month of April, it's going to be very important to connect with your spiritual side so that you can feed your soul and not feel um, like you're not understood or like you are alone. Like I said, even if you're in a marriage or in a committed relationship, there is a need to connect to your spiritual side uh, to find the Zen within you, okay? Now, for the month of May, we have Queen and King of the Same Suit. What does this mean? Well, Virgo, this means that for some of you guys, you will be finding love around the month of May. This could be a soulmate connection. This could be your lifetime partner. This could be a connection that is very deep, very strong from the very beginning um, that turns into a committal relationship and can po possibly uh, turn into a long-term commitment, a marriage, an engagement, a moving in that type of energy when we have two or a couple of the same suit this is a soul type of connection this is a person that has the same aspirations the same goals the same family values the same they see life the way you do so for a lot of you guys especially those of you guys that are single for the month of uh, may very highly possible for you guys to get into a relationship now why do i say that because for the month of june we have the Two of Cups and the Ace of Cups, emotional fulfillment, finding your equal, finding your match, finding your soulmate. Ace of Cups, emotional fulfillment, love overflowing, feeling like synchronicity. For a lot of you guys, synchronicities are going to be happening around this relationship or this partnership. It could be that this person has the same background than you. It could represent that this person has had experiences much like you, um, that there is a deepening connection here. There is a feeling of mutual understanding and really seeing each other um like really seeing each other now for those of you guys that are in a committed relationship this just means the deepening of this relationship it means that there is possibility for engagement or taking it to the next level those of you guys that are married it's just a uh re uh what is it called redeepening of the relationship for some of you guys this could be a, uh, around the time frame where there's some type of celebratory type of energy um, an anniversary, that type of energy. Now, for the month of 
uh, this was what June, July. Okay, so for the month of July, we have the Nine of Swords and the Page of Cups. So for some of you guys, the Knight of Swords feeling a little bit anxious, being a bit overwhelmed or emotional. Now, for some of you guys for this month, you may experience having to deal with a situation regarding a family member. Um, this could be almost a feeling like they're kind of putting the burden on you or they're expecting for you to be the one to step up. Remember not to self-sacrifice yourself, Virgo, because I'm hearing like you got to put boundaries. It's going to be very important. And I think it's really difficult for some of you guys to do that when it comes to family and family dynamics. But what they're saying here is you need to really um, start teaching people about boundaries and uh, to not solely rely on you. Uh, if you have a tendency throughout the year because you're starting to do much better, because you're finding more financial stability. If you have a habit of overdoing or overspending for friends, for relatives, the, around this month, around July, you're going to feel like you're exhausted or you're tired of basically helping people out. And again, there is a feeling of having the need to set boundaries higher. Now for the month of that was June, July, August. For the month of August, we have here the Lover's card and the World card. So again, uh, you know, the, the Lover's card is a representation of a partnership, a, a very deep, sexual, um, loving connection. But with the World card, this could represent taking it to the next level. This is actually marriage happening for some of you guys. Um, for others of you, this could just be a representation of ending a cycle, um, ending a cycle in regards to, okay, so this could be ending a cycle in regards to, um, anything to do with, uh, feeling like you have to make a choice between two options. For some of you guys, this could be around the time frame where there is piv a pivotal moment where, uh, you may be pulled towards the right and an opportunity may come to you from the left uh, in regards to career and in regards to finances. For some of you guys, it could be an opportunity of starting uh, a new job or moving a, uh, moving towards a different job that there may require some type of relocation. Uh, nonetheless, what Spirit is telling you here is about expansion for this year. So if this opportunity presents itself and it works out to the best of your interest, definitely take it. Um, because I feel that for a lot of you guys, travel is going to be something very important for this month. We have the three of wands, two of wands, and the world card. So travel is going to be very highlighted for this uh, year for you guys. Um, so again, and I'm really seeing here with the three of wands of the boat. So I feel that for some of you guys, it could be, this could be about making a choice making a choice that is going to change your life for some of you guys changing residency or moving from a distance or having to relocate to a different state, a different country. And you're shaken by it because you're kind of, you're excited, but at the same time, you're scared of what may happen. Uh, you may be pulling away from family, relatives, and it's all new to you. But what they're telling you is that it's important uh, to take this opportunity for your soul's growth, Virgo. All right, so we have June, July, August, September. Okay, so for September, we have the Three of Pentacles here with the Two of Swords. So again, we go back to this is reminding me of the energy of the Nine of Swords with the Page of Cups. I feel that for the month of, what was this? <laughs> Sorry. Um, July, August, September. For the month of September, I feel that there's going to be a need to come together um, and talk about certain issues. And I feel that this has more to do with the family dynamic than with, than with career. I feel that there may be a situation where people want to address certain things in the family dynamic. This could be dealing with brothers. This could be dealing with sisters, uh, with parents, that type of energy. And the Two of Swords is a representation of feeling like um, you're not really fully seeing their side or you're not fully agreeing. Um, for others of you, this could just represent that you feel stuck. 
you feel stuck because this opportunity presented itself to you and you don't really know what to do. However, for October, we have the Seven of Pentacles with the Two of Pentacles. So this is uh, being able to really take inventory of the blessings, the progress, the movement that you've done. With the Two of Pentacles, this could represent um, finally being able to find the balance, to find the balance between your work life and your personal life. For others of you, this is the restoration of family uh, connections. I feel that you guys are going to be like really tested when it comes to family in the month of February and in the month of August. July and August um, and October. Um, but I feel that in October, there's a lot of healing that happens. There is uh, being able to find the balance or being able to have an open conversation without feeling that you're being like, that they're talking to you in an aggressive way, uh, that you're fully able to express yourself. So again, um, for others of you, this could just be a representation of really looking to the past and analyzing how much you've overcame, how much you have expanded and grown for some of you guys. Um, I feel like there's an energy almost like of wanting to cry because I'm so proud of you. So it's that could be the energy that you start to feel almost like I've achieved so much in such little time. I can't believe for some of you guys, it's even like it's something that you've never really experienced in your life. Um, where all these opportunities start to open up. Uh, so again, beautiful energy here. Now for the month of November, we have the Sun card and the Ace of Wands. So this is like just the, the basically the culmination of your blessings, the Sun card with the Ace of Wands. Uh, this is very, like a very momentum type of energy where you're being blessed left and right. For some of you guys, the Sun card with the Ace of Wands could represent a child on the horizon. For some of you, uh, this could be around the time frame that you find out you're pregnant or your partner's pregnant. For others of you, it could be that you find out you're having a boy uh, with the Ace of Wands here in the Sun. Um, while for others, again, major blessings in regards to your career. Um, this is like massive energy here with the Sun card. The Sun is always a an amazing omen in any reading, uh, but it also represents blessings that are coming to you that you may not be aware of. With the Ace of Wands, it's coming in very quick, and it is the beginning of something new, the beginning of a new cycle, the beginning of a new uh, passion that you're going towards with the Sun card, being blessed and being given the green light to pursue and chase your dreams and your aspirations. Uh, a lot of materialization for the month of November for you guys. And finally, we end the month um, December 2021 with the Ace of Swords and the Emperor card. This is illumination. Uh, this is becoming much more wiser than you've ever experienced. I think that the I think Virgos have really been tested the past couple of years, but I think that this year, 2021, it's like, all your doubts and fears about the future are going to be vanished. I feel that there is, like I said, a major illumination here, major transformation. Uh, it's a different way of seeing life and seeing um, how you view the world and, and those around you. Uh, the emperor is all about structure. It's all about empowerment. And this is the you know entrepreneur type of energy. This is the person that makes things happen with the Ace of Swords, you are going into these endeavors, this new beginnings, this uh, momentum uh, of transformation that is giving you the wisdom that you've, you know, had to deal with the past 20 years. Um, all these blessings are coming to you left and right, Virgo. So again, beautiful reading for you guys. And like I said, from the very beginning, there's major transformations happening for you guys, and I can see why. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I tried to make them, um, I tried to make them as short as possible. 
obviously with all the information and the readings, um, they are going a little bit longer than 40 minutes, so I apologize for that. Uh, I have a tendency of uploading videos that are very short um, because I do appreciate time and I know how, you know, time is very important, uh, but it is massive information. So I hope that this guides you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this. Like I said, comment below if you guys like these videos so that I can continue doing them. Don't forget to support our channel and we'll see you guys soon. Many blessings to all of you guys and happy holidays. Bye.